Hi guys, welcome back to Pablo Moses YouTube channel where curiosity meets the court. Today we'll be discussing about API access with Python. Uh, we'll quickly go through the content and we'll dive right into the topic. For contents, we will be going through the introduction of API and Python and API access which includes mastering the request library, handling the API responses, expanding your toolkit, handling asynchronous requests, code best practices. Later we have API authentication and security which includes understanding API authentication, implementing authentication in Python. Continuing with API security consideration, best practices for secure API interaction. Later, we'll be exploring popular APIs such as Twitter and Spotify, and we'll be going through advanced technicals, real world API integration projects. So, let's get started. Firstly, what is an API? API stands for Application Program Interface, and the purpose of it is facilitating the communication between the system facilitates data exchange, functionality sharing. For architectural style, we have many of them, which includes REST, which is representation state transfer, which is very simple, flexible architecture. It's widely used for web APIs. For visual, it is display a diagram of illustrating REST architecture with an example like Twitter API. The second one would be SOAP, which is simple object access protocol. It is more structure often used in enterprise system and we have to show a diagram of SOAP architecture with examples like payment gateways. And then we have GraphQL, which is query based approach for efficient data retrieval, gaining popularity for its flexibility. Then we have to demonstrate a GraphQL query and response example. And later we have microservices and API driven architecture, which includes trend towards breaking down applications into smaller independent services. And we have APIs as a backbone for communication and integration. And we have for visual, we have display a diagram of a microservices architecture with interconnected API. Next, we have Python and API access. So, firstly, we are mastering the library request. Making API calls with request, import library, import the request, send different request type, which is let it get, post, put, delete, or code examples. Then we have request parameter headers. We have customized request with parameters, examples, query string, data for post or put, set headers for authenticate, connect type, etc. Secondly, secondly, we have handling API responses. So we have passing JSON responses using JSON method on the responded object access data with nested structure, parasing XML responses, XML.e3 elementary like we for passing XML, navigate XML elements and attributes, error handling, check the response status code success 200s or errors 400s and 500s, implement the exception handling for errors. I've also given an error. Lastly, we have expanding your toolkit. Pandas for data analysis, powerful library for data manipulation and analysis. Easily create data frames from API response and we have perform calculation, visualization, data cleaning. And we have libraries to, to specific tasks. We know for image processing request, auto hair library for O auth authentication and we have HTTPX for asynchronous requests. Moving on, we have handling asynchronous requests. So asynchronous programming including handling multiple requests currently without blocking and it also improves performance and responsiveness and we have Async library, Python's input library for asynchronous programming and async and await keyboards for defining asynchronous functions. Uh, thirdly, we have framework like Fast API built in support for asynchronous operation. Optimizes API performances and the benefit and challenges include perform scales and increased complexity. Moving on, we have code best practices. We have clean code formatting, consistent indication, meaningful variable names, comments, improves readability and maintainability 
Model learning breaks down the code into functions and classes, enhances organization and reusability. Error handling includes anticipate potential errors and handle them gracefully, improves reliability and user experience. For unit testing, we have write tests to ensure code functionality as expected, improves code quality and prevents regression. API documentations which provide clear documentation of your API facilitates usage and integration by others. Going on, we have understanding API authentication. Firstly, we have API authentication and security. Uh, purpose of authentication to protect APIs from unauthorized access, control who can use resources and perform actions. Common authentic authentication methods include API keys, simple shared secrets for basic authentication, or all open standard for secure or authorization example social gains. And we have JWT which is JSON Web Token, self-contained tokens for stateless authentication. And we have basic authentication with username and password which is less secure often with HTTPS. And we have diagram illustrating each method's flow. Real world problems, examples, Twitter using OAuth. Secondly, we have using API keys for implementation of authentication in Python. We can use API keys which include key as a header or a query parameters, code examples with request library. Using OR obtain access tokens through OR flows, libraries like request O auth lib for handling OAuth. Code example demonstrating OAuth authentication. Secure credential storage, avoid hard coding credential in code, use environment variables or secure storage mechanism. Moving on, we have data security which includes encryption for sensitive data in transit at rest, data validation and sanitization to pro prevent injection attacks and we have authorization, control access to specify resources and action and we have role based access control which is RPAC and other models. Vulnerability management, regular scan of for vulnerabilities in APIs and dependencies, patch vulnerabilities prompt. Next we have API gateway, centralized point for man managing API traffic, enforces security policies and ways limiting. Rate limiting protects against excessive requests and denial of service attacks. So the best practices for API interaction would be input validation, validate user input to prevent malicious data, sanitize the data to improve the potential threat, and second one, to secure the coding practices, follow a secure coding guidelines to prevent vulnerabilities, use updated libraries and dependencies, and thirdly we have error handling. Avoid revealing sensitive information in error messages handler, handle expect, exception securely. And fourthly, we have regular testing and auditing. Conduct penetration testing to identify vulnerabilities, regular audit API security practices. Lastly, we have to explore our popular APIs. We will start with Twitter API. What are the key features of Twitter API? We have access to tweets, user profiles, trends and more. We search for specified keyword or hashtag, retrieve user timelines and follow or following information. Common use cases include sentiment analysis of tweets, tracking trending topics, building social media dashboard and social listening for brands. In the case of Spot EMI, what are the key features? Search for artist album and tracks, create a managed playlist, get audio features like tempo key etc. Control playback, which is optimal premium feature in Spotify. Common use case scenarios are building music recommendation system, creating personalized playlists, analyzing music trends and patterns. So what are the advanced technologies of API? We'll be discussing it. Firstly, we have streaming APIs. Handle real-time data stream. Example in Twitter streams and stock prices, we have a real-time data streams. Libraries are used such as request async and web sockets. Secondly, we have web scraping with APIs which extract data from the website without official APIs. The libraries used here are Beautiful Soup and Scrappy. And the third one will be API testing frameworks. 
which is automate API testing for reliability and quality. Frameworks such as PyTest, HTTP, BIN, Tavern are used. Advanced concepts include catching, improve performance by sorting frequently access data, API mocking which is simulate API behavior for testing and development. So one of the real world API integration projects I will be discussing a few of them. Firstly, we have news aggregator app. It gathers news articles from multiple news API, combines and presents articles in a unified interface, uses APIs for content retrieval, search and filtering. So project two, it includes e-commerce price comparison tool. It fetches product data from various retail, which is APIs, which is Amazon, eBay, Walmart, etc. Compares prices and features across retailers. Thirdly, we have leverages API for product search, data extraction and pricing the comparisons. Thirdly, we have social media sentiment analysis dashboard, which is used the most in today's state. It collects tweets or social media posts using Twitter API, analyzes uh, sen sentiment which is positive, negative or neutral, visualizes trends and insights, API usage for data collection and sentiment analysis. So that's it for today. If you have learned something from this video, please do like, share and comment on below. What are the other topics that I will, you guys want me to cover? Thank you.